Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of No Names All Game. Today is July 8th. As you're listening to this, my name is Chris Hankin, joined as always by my co-host Pat Calicchio, and we are getting closer to the season. I feel like every year I say this in the off-season, we've got so much time. We're going to do so many off-season episodes. We're going to do all kinds of new things. And then before you know, we're basically at summer ball. Um, but I think I think we're actually a little bit ahead of schedule this year. Um, we're actually on season four of this show, Pat. I don't know if you know that. We've been doing this for a couple of years now, which is kind of crazy because it still feels like brand new in a sense. But it also feels like this is what we were meant to do and we've been doing it forever. So let's still leave it there. like an amateur, even though I've been oh, doing this for four years, apparently. We're, we're 100% amateurs. But this <laughs> is, we're going into season four, three seasons under the belt. Um, and I'm excited. We got, some, we got a couple things lined up uh, for the next couple of weeks and months as we lead into the season. Um, you know, we're finally getting our act together a little bit, um, hopefully being a little bit more consistent. But it's been about a month since our last one, a little bit over a month. How you been, man? How's life? Not bad. You know, just... Uh... Not doing a whole lot. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, know, it's not football I, season, so I just sit in my room and wait for football to start. Exactly, exactly. But very excited for the Olympics coming up. A couple, uh, couple of Nittany Line Wrestling Club guys. Yeah, one Penn, who's, who's one Penn Stater. So we've got, from the Nittany Line Wrestling Club, David Taylor, Thomas Gilman, and Kyle Snyder. Uh, okay. One of them attended Penn State, David Taylor. That's David so Taylor, the magic Foremost man. in our hearts. But, yep, you know, yep. equal love to all our, our, all our Nittany Lions going to the Olympics. That's awesome. Exciting, exciting. I'll definitely tune into that. Um, it feels like we haven't had an Olympics in a while. Wasn't it supposed to be last year and then coronavirus kind of ruined that? Yeah, supposed to be 2020. And they're still, weirdly enough, calling it Tokyo 2020. Oh, that is I guess they weird. don't want to redo all the merchandise. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess there's probably a lot of money sunk into that. Yeah. <laughs> that is kind of funny. You're just like, hey, it's 2021, but let's all just call it 2020 yep. and maybe no one will notice. Not to mention there's like two O's in Tokyo and two zeros in 2020. They probably have something planned for that. You know? Yeah, there's, there's probably something like So they were like, listen, we can't pyro. not do this. Yeah, you know, I'm on board. Fuck it. Tokyo yeah. 2020. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Well, we got some good stuff this this episode. Um, we got a couple of couple of updates to talk about. Um, we have the name image likeness, which has been huge. Um, we're going to do our first ever draft. You and I are going to do that later at the end of the show. Uh, we're going to have some guests on, but our friends hate us and couldn't join. Uh, kidding. They got busy. It happens. Um, this is not a new concept. Every podcast you listen to probably does this in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but we're going to do a draft featuring name image and likeness. Name, name, image, likeness, say that three times fast, uh, at the end of the show. Uh, and we'll talk about recruiting because that's some fireworks recently, especially since our last episode, especially in this last weekend. And uh, things are heating up a whole lot. Um, but I think we start with one of the coolest stories of recent memory. Um, our guy, former Penn State All-American, Carl Nassib, becomes the first active NFL player to come out gay. Um, it was such a cool moment, man, on, on the internet where we live, where things happen and everyone's reacting to the same thing at the same time. I think this is one of the cooler moments where it felt like, for the most part, I'm sure there were internet trolls, but for the most part, it felt like everyone was just so supportive of him and what was happening at that moment. It was just really cool to be a part of. Yeah, I, I thought it was great, especially from, you know, like, like, let's be honest, Penn State has a bit of a more conservative fan base, I think, in a lot of ways. Definitely. Like, older people in the fan base and to not see really any backlash to it i thought was very cool um and to you know the the troll the trolls here weren't as much like against anything he said they were the you know the who cares people yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and all right for for the who cares people listen it's fine that you don't care about carl nassib's sexual identity it doesn't affect you it doesn't affect me i don't care that much either but you know who does care is like some 13 year old who loves football and is also not sure about his sexual identity. And now he realizes that those two things don't have to be mutually exclusive. Like that's who cares. Yeah. And like a absolutely. bunch of kids in this country who can now be themselves and be football players. Yeah, completely. And I think, I mean, what was, what was so amazing about it for me, one is like, the nonchalantness of the way he announced it. Like, I feel like anytime people make personal announcements, for the most part, people make a production out of it. And like, I don't, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like if you have something that's super important to you, draw it out as long as you want. That's fine. But Carl just got on his phone. He's like, hey, I'm here at my family's house. I uh, just want to say I'm gay. Uh, and just like kept talking. And it was like, it was so like matter of fact. Like, and he said, he's like, I hope this doesn't have to be a thing in the future. And that's how he addressed it, which was like, 
it was just so perfect. Like, Hey, what's up? I'm gay. That's me. Cool. Let's move on to what's important. Um, and then he started talking about, uh, his partnership and his donation, uh, with the Trevor project, which is, um, really amazing nonprofit that I never heard of until Carl brought this up, but they are, um, a nonprofit that focuses on suicide prevention for young people in the LGBTQ plus community, um, which is, like you just said, it's so huge for kids who are, are questioning or know who they are and are scared to talk about it. Um, suicide is such a real thing. And for someone, um, you know, Carl's not a, a superstar by any means, but he's an NFL player. He is an active player who gets playing time, who plays in the NFL, who has a platform. For him to come out and say this is so, so important. And then to donate $100,000, like, that's not, a, that's not a small sum of money. Like, that's, I know he's, he's doing okay for himself, but that's pretty amazing. Um, the NFL eventually did come out and match that, which I thought was really cool. Um, and, and like I said, you just see the support. You saw Saquon tweeted about it. Uh, a couple of former Penn State players that played with Carl. I know Brandon Bell tweeted. Uh, James Franklin tweeted that him and his wife were donating 10 k uh, Sean Spencer, his former D-line coach, tweeted, and then even people like in the community, um, Billie Jean King, George Takei, Billy Eichner, Bobby Burke from Queer Eye, like, it was just a really cool moment, like I said, where it felt like everyone was kind of on the same page, and like, what more can you ask for, you know? Yeah, it was great, um, and you know, especially in like a, you know, football's a very masculine activity, yep. um, not something that people would stereotypically, you know... Yeah, associate with gay people and to be able to, you know, just be able to say like, yeah, I, I'm gay, but that doesn't make me not like, you know, and, and yeah. I'm sure, you know, for a lot of people in that environment, it's not super, you don't know how it's going to be taken. Of course. If you, if I mean, you, you, you not, remember. If you're not Carl Nassib and you're coming. Yeah, out. of course. You remember a couple of years ago, Michael Sam was the first yeah. player who actually came out when he got drafted. Um, you know, he kissed his boyfriend on TV when he got drafted and like people were in uproar. Like he shouldn't be yeah. doing that. Keep it, keep it to yourself. Like that was a moment where people, where there was backlash. Um, so that's the distinction here that Carl's the first active player doing it. Um, and they, they said his, his Jersey was the top seller the next day in fanatics. Like that's amazing. Um, yeah, awesome. I'm, a, I'm addicted to TikTok. So there were so many TikToks of people again in the community, like gay guys being like, Ooh, I love football now. Who's Carl? He's hot. Like I think <laughs> Carl, Carl's probably been doing fine for himself anyway. He's a good looking dude. Like, but if, if not, he's got a whole new audience of fans who adore him. Um, I'll, so I think be, that's uh, really, really cool. Every time I see a Carl Nassib jersey at the Abbey, I'll post on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, and yeah, it was cool. And the NFL put out like a commercial afterwards too. Like it was a, a week or so later, um, kind of outlined that they are going to continue to partner with the Trevor Project, um, which is huge. And and I tweeted this out like. It does feel like a little bit of pandering, honestly, like, hey, this fits our, our narrative, this fits our storyline, so we're going to jump on it. Obviously, the NFL has not been as open with other causes. Um, obviously, Colin Kaepernick, the national anthem protests, you know, the racial injustices, they have turned a blind eye, they've blackballed people, they've punished people. Like, it, it, you wish and you hope that they would have an open stance and a similar stance. Um, so I, I understand that because I did see a lot of that on Twitter of like, yeah, this is great, but like, why are you so supportive of one but not the other? Um, and I think that's I think that's a deeper conversation that personally, I'm probably not super qualified to speak on. Um, I, I hope that they come around and they they get better on that side of things. Um, but in this moment, for Carl, for what he's been doing, I think it was really really cool to see everyone supporting him. Yeah, I'm a lot more concerned about like the individuals in the NFL who are being supportive of him than the organization. Yeah, no absolutely. Doubt. That's what absolutely. I'm choosing to focus on. Yeah, completely. And like I said, there there was quite a few, like I said, I'm not remembering all the names. There were quite a few players that were like, respect, bro. Like, congrats for you. Like, proud of you for doing this. And like, that's got to feel good. Like, I, I yeah. think he, I think he was very comfortable in his own right of where he was. Like, he, I think he was like truly at a point. I'm sure there's always, you're going to care what people think, but I think he was at like a point of peace of like, this is who I am. I'm going to do this and I'm going to use my platform, but it's always cool to see people come out and support. Absolutely. Um, all right, let's move on. You want to jump in name, image, likeness, or recruiting first? You know what? Let's do let's do name, image, likeness. Then we'll go recruiting. Then we'll come back to the draft, guys. We're we're, we're firing hot today. Okay, it's the first all podcast right. in a month. Name, image, likeness, NIL, as it is often abbreviated, is officially approved. Kids can make money off of their name, image, and likeness. I'm going to say those three words about a million times in this show. Um, but I'll, I'll pitch it to you first. Overall thoughts. What's your take on the whole situation? Yeah, I mean, it's about time. I think this is, you know, I, I I can understand the argument for not having the university directly pay players because, you know, with small universities not being able to compete. But 
the the fact that like uh you know a college athlete couldn't you know people could essentially make money off of a college athlete's name image image and likeness but they couldn't it was pretty ridiculous yeah i don't think we need to beat this point to death i think most people are on board that yes it needed to happen it's overdue it, it was a gross gross oversight from uh, the NCAA to not have it done. Um, and I think that, you know, the main point is like, Hey, college coaches are getting paid millions and millions of dollars. Athletic directors are getting paid millions of millions of dollars. This is not like everyone is doing this for free, right? Like that, that I think is the main argument. Um, but the other side of it, a lot of people are saying this is going to, you know, mess with recruiting. This is going to create an even bigger gap because bigger schools are going to be more well prepared. I, I get it. But like my, my counter is just, this was inevitable. This was going to happen in the world we live in today, whether it was this year, whether it was next year, whether it was three years from now, like it was going to happen. So like why fight it at this point? I think the one thing that I was a little shocked at, honestly, was that it got pushed through and passed like so quickly. Um, I mean, this has been deliberated for what, five years, 10 years. People have been talking about this probably, probably even longer, but like I think in the forefront for five or 10 years. And then like, it felt like a month went by and they were like, all right, go ahead. Like, and yeah. like everyone's pushing out their logos. Everyone's talking about their deals. I'm like, people are going to get in trouble, man. If this isn't done with some like structure and some like clarity. I, I think I tweeted that. And I think it was our friend, our good friend, CJ Scalzetti. He was like structure. <laughs> That's a joke. Like, and I mean, he's kind of right. Like in a lot of sense, I think there's probably a lot of schools that are either standing up departments to handle this or like, their, you know, communications departments are like frantically running to be like, okay, how do we handle this now? It's brand new, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's going to be like, I know Oklahoma state is already like up and running with a whole program that they're very like, they're, they're in a good place for this right now. Um, I'm sure most of the big universities are, but I, you know, I think in terms of, I think it's going to have sort of a dual effect on recruiting because the fact of the matter is, like, yeah, are more kids going to make money at Ohio State and Alabama and Clemson and Penn State? Sure. But, like, you could go to uh, – I don't know the name. Like, a, if you're, like, the best player on Appalachian State, like, you're going to make more money off your name, image, and likeness there than if you're a backup at Ohio State. True. Yeah. Yeah, it's very true. Um, and I, I think Penn State did they, – they put out a statement, too, that – uh, statement. That's funny. That's what they're calling it. Statement is their program where they're going to provide resources, provide education, kind of teach these kids how to do it right, how to handle their money, how to, you know, make sure that they're taking deals that are proper, you know, because that's another thing. You can't just say like, oh, I'm sponsored and I'm sponsored. Like you have to have paperwork. You have to do yeah. things the right way. So Penn State did put out put out uh, a statement that they're doing that as well. Um, but we've seen it. We've seen deals flying already. So um, we have several barstool athletes, which I think is is hilarious. I mean, if you if you follow me on Twitter, you know I'm a barstool fan. Like, I know people have their indifferences. I love barstool. It is what it is. But just to see them like Portnoy out of nowhere is like, yeah, I'm gonna start this, and then just they're basically signing anyone who DMs them yeah. is hilarious, hilarious. Um, so we I have mean, it basically athletes. just started because some athlete just asked them if he could be a barstool athlete. Yeah, like it was, sponsored it was a girl. by barstool. I think, she's, I think she was a volleyball player. Um, yeah, whoever it was. She, she, yeah, she was like, she was like, can I be a barstool athlete? He was like, yeah, sure. And then they just ran with it. Um, I don't think anyone knows exactly what it means, like what they get out of it, what the sponsorship nope. is. Uh, but superstar wrestler Roman Bravo Young is a barstool athlete. Right. Um, our uh, our touchback Jesus Jordan Stout, kicker punter for Penn State football, is a barstool athlete. Um, there's a couple of hockey players, a couple of lacrosse players. I'm sorry, I don't remember everyone's name. I think our um, backup punter is also. Yeah, or, or maybe long, <laughs> like, is, is, yeah, backup <laughs> punter. I think I saw our long snapper on there. Like, there's, they're accepting everyone and anyone. Will, Will Levis is on there, former Penn Stater. Um, so that's kind of interesting. The other ones that you see a lot of, a lot of guys are signing up for Cameo, um, which is like, that's in the easiest outlet, I think. Like, if people yeah. want to pay you for shout outs, good. Sean Clifford's on there. $35 for a Cameo. That's not bad at not all. Not a bad actually. deal. 35 bucks is great, actually. I, I, yeah. Dude, you know what? I saw Micah Parsons on there. He's up to 200 bucks for a shout-out, which, I mean, I get it. First-round draft pick, big-time NFL guy now. We got him because he is, you know, the voice you hear at the beginning of the show when he says, hey, I'm Micah Parsons. You're listening to No Names All Game. I think we got him for, like, 30 bucks, 40 bucks. So, good on us. Um, you know who else <laughs> is on there for quite a bit of money? Uh, our guy, Trace McSorley, 175 175 That's pretty was big like, for It's pretty for big for, for a backup QB, but, like, probably. A third-string QB. Yeah, you're right, actually. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> but people probably pay He it, probably man. leads the league in third-string money. 
Yeah. On, yeah, on Cameo. True. <laughs> true. I, dude, I might, I might buy one eventually. Fuck it. Um, but there, there's a lot of current players on there. There's uh, Sean Clifford's on there. Uh, Liam Clifford, who isn't even like, I don't even know if he's on campus yet. He's on there. Uh, Keandre Lambert Smith, I saw on there. So that's one that's kind of easy for guys to get into. Um, a lot of guys are doing the gaming one. Have you seen, I think it's Yoke, uh, Yoke Gaming. It's like a company that athletes sign up for, and then you can like play games with the athletes. So like you could be playing Madden with one of the Penn state players. Um, Interesting. So I saw a bunch of people tweeting that one out. Uh, my favorite one, my favorite one of all time so far, I say of all time, it's been like a week. <laughs> we have two athletes, Jake Pinniger, uh, one of our kickers and also Roman Bravo, Bravo young just announced today that they are sponsored by wings over happy Valley, which is my favorite restaurant yes. in state college. It is. They are like, I don't even get the wings. I get the big boneless tenders. They are so good. I, I will get them three times a day if I'm there. I get them. There's one on Long Island. I get them almost every time I'm home. That's like my dream sponsorship. If for some reason the guy at Wings Over is listening to this, like you don't even have to pay me. I just want like free wings. I, I would love that. <laughs> um, uh, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen a lot of other like companies yet though. It's mostly been like the cameo and the gaming stuff. Um, and I haven't really seen any personal logos. Have you? I mean, other than the quarterback from Wisconsin, no. Yeah, yeah. So I've seen it from other schools. So the quarterback from Wisconsin, Graham Mertz, put his out. He was the first one. Um, and I think he's going to get sued into oblivion because his looks and I think like that's three why we or four seen different that many. <laughs> Yeah, his looks like three or four different ones. There's like there's one gorilla gaming company that it's like identical but different colors. Um, it kind of looks like McAfee Software. Um, it looks like a bunch of the ones, so he's probably going to have to change that. Uh, Spencer Radler put out a logo. He also has a deal with Raising Canes, which is like a huge chicken place down south. Um, about a couple of quarterbacks put out logos. Some of them are some of them are shit. Honestly, I think guys are just trying to rush to get something out there. Like, I get it. You're excited, but like, put out something that like represents you and like people would actually buy. Um, I don't know. I thought Spencer Radler's was pretty good. Some of the other quarterbacks were not. Um, who else had a big one? Kayvon Thibodeau. He's a big time defensive player out in Oregon. Signed a six figure deal with Nike. Um, he he tweeted he tweeted out like I'm partnering up with Phil Knight and someone else. I was like, oh, what do you mean you're partnering with Phil Knight? Like that's that's the like the head of Nike. And the first tweet was like some art project that he did with the, with some artist and Phil Knight. And then like there was an article on him. It was like a one year six figure deal uh, through the end of this year. See, he, he's going to go pro next year. He'll be a top ten pick, but they're paying him six figures to do something. So good for him. That's <laughs> insanity. Insane. Right. Like, I, See, I that's understand. a little bit where like, I, I, that stinks a little of like this guy from Oregon who owns the biggest sports apparel company just threw six figures at one of their players. Yeah. That's probably going to do well for recruiting. If I, if, if yeah. I'm a kid deciding between Oregon and, and maybe Penn state. Yeah. That might sway me. Um, again, I think that's going to be an outlier and, and this was an article. I don't know what the actual sum is, but that's what they said in the article. So I'm, I'm quoting them. If they're wrong, I'll take the heat for that. But, um, that would, that would sway me if I was a recruit, if I was a big time recruit between two programs and one of them had a guy on their team who just got six figures. Yeah. I'd go there in a heartbeat. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, I didn't know you could get like a Nike sponsorship. If you were, well, I mean, I don't, like, I don't they sponsor think- teams. Yeah, so I don't think there's really – the only restrictions that I've seen is, like, you can't partner with, like, gambling, alcohol, tobacco, um, probably, like, anything like the adult entertainment industry, I would yeah. imagine. Like, any any of those kind of things, the seven deadly sins. Um, but, yeah, you would think there'd be something, like, for, for the big, huge companies. But, like, this is going to happen. Kids are going to get sponsorships from McDonald's and Coca-Cola. And, like, it, it's going to happen. It's just – it's crazy how fast it's all happening. That, that I think is the scary thing for me where like, I just want, I want these kids to like be taken care of so that they can maximize it. They can get paid, they can get their money, but like not completely like get lost in it, I guess. Um, I don't know how I navigate it. it. It seems impossible. I mean, shout out to whoever's going through that process right now, get yours, but I don't quite envy it. Yeah. Um, and then the last one I saw the, uh, Announcement, the Hawk and Doc podcast. Uh, so Nick Dawkins, uh, a, I think, redshirt freshman offensive lineman, and Aeneas Hawkins, defensive lineman, um, two guys who are, are known to have personalities on the team, announced the podcast. So basically, we got competition now, Pat. Um, these guys are trying to step into our world, okay? I can never bench press what you can bench press, but 
I can talk like a motherfucker. So if you guys want to come on, you know, learn from the best. We'd, we'd yeah. love to have you. Ha- happy to, you know, groom some newcomers in the industry. Absolutely. We're all friends here. We're all friends. Podcast industry is a beautiful place to be. Um, but it is exciting. So we're going to do a draft, like I said, later in the show. We, we, meant, we meant to have a couple friends on and do like a, you know, a three or four person draft. Um, we'll have those in the future. But what we're going to do is we're going to draft our, if we had a business, um, who, what Penn State players we would want to sign. We're going to pick one offensive player, one defensive player, a special teamer, and then a fourth miscellaneous can be whatever you want. Um, okay, so this is just for my own. Am I coming up with a business that I own? You can if you want to. You you asked me that like when we first came up with this idea, and I've since then been trying to think of a business that I own, and I can't come up with one. So I personally don't have one, but I have a feeling you do. Okay, I have one that's an actual business that I is a little mean but kind of funny. <laughs> okay, save it, save it, <laughs> save it. And we'll, we'll do it's that. It's not my a business; it's a real business. <laughs> okay, all right. We will, I'll do that we one will, at the end. We will get to that shortly. Let's let's wrap up the actual episode here before we get to our draft. This might actually be a short episode. Uh, you know how I say that pretty much every time and then we run like an hour and a half? We're kind of cruising right now. <laughs> um, next up is recruiting. I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking, but recruiting's been like on a hot streak, man. Have you been following? I know you're an up and coming recruiting expert. Number two in the nation, baby. <laughs> Number two, baby. Number two. And- I should have thrown up regular twos instead of, instead of uh, the horns. Yeah, you did just throw up the horns. If anyone's watching yeah. this on YouTube, Sorry. we're going to try to be better with YouTube. You just saw Pat. He's a Texas fan now, apparently. <laughs> uh, um but yeah, Penn State is currently the number two ranked recruiting class in the nation. And uh, uh, what's his account? PSU Everything or PSU Strong? I, I'm blanking. He tweeted out today basically what I was going to say anyway. is like, yeah, we're not going to end up at two. Like, that's yeah. not where we're going to end. But no, Alabama's at like 15. Yeah, ex- Alabama's going <laughs> to pass us. LSU, uh, Clemson, Texas A&M even. Like, there, there are these teams that have like eight or nine kids. We have 18 kids. And the rate, the ratings go on your total score, not your average. So there are going to be some teams that pass us, but we'll likely still finish in the top 10 and coming off a four and five season. That's pretty damn impressive. Yeah. Very happy with that. And I do like, aside from just being number two right now, like I'm liking the look of a lot of the kids coming in. Yeah, absolutely. So let's do this. I'm going to rattle off basically Everyone who's committed since our last episode is a lot of guys. And then you give me maybe one or two of your favorites since then. And then we'll talk about some of the remaining targets um, that we have. Since our last episode, we talked about a couple of guys. Then we have had Alex Machetta. He's the number one punter in the nation. Those guys don't get stars, but he is rated number one um, from corn blue kicking. Uh, Tyler Johnson, a three-star wide receiver from Virginia. We had J.B. Nelson, who's an offensive tackle, the number two Juco player in the country. And then the fireworks that started this weekend where we got one, two, three, four, five commits in a span of like two or three days. Uh, Keon Wiley, a three-star linebacker from Philly. Zane Durant, a four-star D lineman from Florida. Tyrese Fearbry, a four-star D lineman from Pittsburgh. Caleb Artis, a three-star D lineman from New York. And the crown jewel of the class to date, Nicholas Singleton, a four-star running back from Pennsylvania. What do you think of this haul that just came in, the fireworks show that came in over 4th of July weekend? Yeah, I mean, that was great. And Singleton, obviously, the big one. Uh, and by the way, this goes to show you like how ridiculous it is to be a five-star recruit. I think he's the third-ranked running back in the class, and he's a four-star. Like, Crazy. There just aren't a lot of – there's probably, what, one five-star running back in the class, maybe two? Yep. Like, there's – there's usually less than 10 per class, right? Yeah, so five, five stars are, you know, the cream of the crop, whether you're looking at, you know, the composite or just a single rating service. Um, I don't know the exact number, but it, it, it's, not, it's not a lot, right? It, you, have to, no is more, it, what, you have to be above a 95, or is it higher than that? It might be higher, honestly. I don't know what the threshold is, but normally five stars are like 96, 97 plus. Um, and, and, and honestly, I don't know Like if each service has a different rating, if they have the same cutoff. That's probably something I should look up and I should know. Um, but yeah, uh, Nick Singleton is the number one player in our class. I think he's a 95-something or ninety a high 94 maybe. He's just yeah. ahead of Caden Sanders. So uh, Caden Saunders, sorry. Um, but he's a stud. He's an absolute stud. I'm, I'm so excited to have this kid. Yeah, I'm also I'm very excited about this Tyler Johnson kid from uh, Virginia. Are you- uh, I heard uh, the guy on the T Frank from the Let Me Be Frank yeah. podcast talking about like yep. he's got some some serious skills that could be very exciting in the next level, and he's only three stars because of the canceled season. Like if he had been able to have a season, he'd you know 
and like, barring something unforeseen, would have been an easy right. four-star recruit. Yep. So I, I, I love the idea of bringing a guy in or under the radar and getting a lot of production out of him. Um, and then other than that, I'm also excited about um, Keon, we- Keon Wiley. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I, I always love when linebackers come in. Like I, I want, you know, it's, I think it's, it's the most iconic position at Penn State, linebacker you. Like, we just had Micah Parsons. Like, we want to continue this domination of linebackers. And I, I also want the best kids from Pennsylvania. You know? Yeah. This kid's, he's a Philly kid. This is where I want to draw people from. I want to, you know, you want to put a border around the state that people don't go outside of. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a huge important call. So Keon Wiley is currently a three star, and I think this is this is something that's hilarious because every fan base does this. If you get a three star, everyone says, "Oh, he'll be a four star sooner." He's a four star in this service. He's just three star in the compile. If you get a high four star, it's I could see this kid being a five star, and I do this all the time. Like I'm not saying I'm immune to this, but it is so funny to me that like we always justify. Um, like who gives a shit? Like the stars are the stars. I trust the coaches. Yes, you want four and five stars, of course. But if the coaching staff thinks this kid is a stud linebacker or could be a stud linebacker, like hell yeah, I love that. Um, and like you said, we actually haven't recruited well in Philly um, historically. So he comes from Imatep Charter, which is uh, Shaka Tony's high school, um, and he he gave a shout out to Coach Dion Barnes. Um, if you remember, he was a player not too long ago. Uh, had a very short stint in the NFL, actually was on the Jets for a hot minute. He was a D lineman, um, but had a great career at Penn State. Uh, and he's become, he was a grad assistant. Now he's, I think, an assistant like D line coach. And he's done a really good job recruiting. He's a Philly kid. He can relate to these kids. Um, and in Keon Wiley's uh, like press conference, when he announced, he said, he's like, you know, the relationship with Coach Dion, like, of course, I touched Coach Franklin and, and you know, Coach Terry and all those guys, but like, Coach Dion was was really you know there for me, and I was like, that's that's important, that's huge. Um, I think with Singleton, I think we have seven of the top thirteen kids in Pennsylvania right now, with a chance to have two more probably um, in the next section that we'll get to. Like, is there a did Emotep have another big recruit? Um, is Anai White from there? Maybe the I was going to say I think Anai White is from. Yeah, there. and he's number one kid in Philly. I have no read on him, honestly. I don't know what his crystal balls look like, um, but I have not heard him on our radar whatsoever. Um, that would be insane if we picked him up too, because he's a stud. Yeah, I, I, I heard I, from what I was looking at, like beginning, we were like in the mix, and I don't think we very much are anymore. Yeah, yeah, but like I said, seven of the top thirteen. When you know, in years past, we've had we've had ups and downs in Pennsylvania. James Franklin's, yeah. you know, his his mantra is dominate the state. You got to show that, and they're doing it in this class. So um, I agree with you on all that. For me, I think Tyrese Fearbry, um was really exciting because this is a kid who was like 100% locked in on Pitt, and then he took a, a visit to Penn State like three weeks ago, and like he came out of that visit, and he said, he's like, oh, if I was picking today, I'd pick Penn State. Like he said that in like an interview, and it wasn't until like the day before he committed that somebody finally flipped the crystal ball. So everyone kind of thought he was still going to Pitt. Um, so that was like a nice surprise. He's a four-star defensive lineman. Like. Let's go. I love that. I love taking from Pitt. Like, yes. I don't like, I don't love the, we have a rivalry with Pitt because I really don't think we do, but it's always like a nice little win. Um, all right. So let's wrap up uh, with a couple um, remaining targets. So th- this is where it gets a little dicey because we have 18 kids in this class ready. That's, that's a big class as is. Um, and there's at least six that I count top targets that we are in good position to land. That would be a class of 24 recruits. That's a big class. Um, I have no idea what the scholarship count looks like. I have no idea what the extra year of eligibility does to that from, from COVID. Um, but our top remaining prospects, uh, first I did, a, I did pronounce his name wrong last time. I called him Danny Dennis Sutton. It is deny. Sorry about that. So deny Dennis Sutton, uh, four star D lineman, a five star by rivals. Um, could be, he, he would be, I believe that our highest rated prospect, even over Nick Singleton. Um, he is committing on July 22nd. Keep an eye out for that one. Uh, Christian Driver, son of former NFL great Donald Driver. He's a four-star safety. He's committing in the end of the end of this month as well, July 29th. Then we got Keenan Nelson Jr., four-star corner. Darius Clemens, four-star wide receiver. Katron Allen, a four-star running back. And Cam Miller, a four-star corner. Um, these are six guys that, like, again, for the most part, we're in a very good position to land. Um, I hope we have room for all of them because that would be a really nice finish to what has already been an excellent class. Yeah. I have said it before on the, uh, on the podcast. I really want Keenan Nelson jr. Uh, for the same reasons that I wanted that I'm, I'm excited, uh, about, 
Um, Keon Wiley, I want, you know, we've, I think we've had struggles in Philadelphia and to not only land a Philly kid, but a kid from St. Joe's, which is like the top football school in Philadelphia that I don't really think we've recruited well from specifically there. No. Uh, I think that would be good for us. Yeah. Yeah. Completely agree. Um, for me, I mean, obviously Denai Dennis Sutton is, is the number yeah. one target right but now. Anyway, he's like a 97 on 24 seven, but still a fourth. Like I don't, I don't understand. That's, that's what, what I'm saying. Like he should be a, com- <laughs> he should be a composite five star, but he's probably, I like, don't understand what makes a five star. Yeah. He's probably just a little bit too low on one of them for some reason. Like he, he, again, and I literally just made fun of people do this, but it would not shock me if he was a five star very, very soon. Um, but as I pick up my quarter, um, yeah, he, he's a guy who all crystal boys, crystal balls, crystal boys, Jesus, I'm drunk. <laughs> all crystal balls point to Penn state, but they're all from like May. And his recruitment has picked up a lot in the last couple of weeks, in the last month. Um, he's taken visits to, I think, Georgia and Alabama, which are two heavy hitting programs. Yeah. Um, do I think we still the recruiting trail in the past? Yeah. Do I think we still land him? I think if I had to pick like gun to my head, I'd say yes, but I'm not as confident as I was with some of the other guys. So um, I think this is a really good class. You have to give the, you know, the staff credit for what they've been able to do. I really love the, uh, I don't know if you've seen on Twitter, some of the guys that have been committed for real long have been tweeting out the graphic 107% locked in, basically shutting down their recruitment saying like no chance I'm flipping. That's not something we've done in the past, but I think it's really cool. Yeah. I like it too. I think it, um, more so in maybe just because I didn't know this, but more so in the past and like maybe like the one or two most recent classes, you've seen like a community between the guys who are committed. Like they already feel like they're teammates. And I, yeah. I think that's cool. And I think it's helping draw people in. Absolutely. And this, this class in particular, this is not a shot to the 2021 class, but the 2021 class was a little underwhelming for what we expected and what our standards were. I think there's a ton of real potential in there. And I think some guys are going to be great. I'm not knocking it, but it was a bit of a down year. This year you see top kids who normally we, we don't sweat out like, oh, they might flip, but like, there's a little bit of that in the back of your head. Like a lot of times, cause these kids are getting recruited heavily by many other programs. So there's always that like, Oh shit! What if they flip? Oh shit! What if we have a down year yeah. and they and, don't I mean, like and it we have had top kids. Flip. Oh yeah, I mean, like Michael times. Parsons slipped for a little bit. Yeah, well, he opened it up. He didn't well, yeah. flip, but he opened it up. Um, but yeah, it, it's nice to see these kids who are like have such a camaraderie, who are recruiting each other, who are trying to build something special. And like, I feel like you get that every couple of classes where it's like, you know, there's something special brewing here, and that's happening with the 2022 class. So. Stay tuned for the rest of this month, um, and then you know we'll have to see kind of how many we can take, but this is going to be a special class for sure. All right, let's wrap up uh, a couple of Twitter questions, and then we'll get to our draft. So let's start. Uh, we got a couple of like, on-the-field questions for this season. I think I say this every year as well, but I think we'll do more in-depth like previews and predictions as we get closer to the season, probably mid-August. Um, but let's, let's do some high level stuff here. So we are recruiting at, we are recruit says, what are your realistic expectations for the teams? What will be the strengths of the team and what will be the weaknesses? And then Zach, AKA at pretty Flacco says, what position groups are weakest right now? And will it significantly hold us back? So I think those two kind of go together. Um, let's start. What are your realistic expectations for this team? Um, I mean, the beginning of the season is just going to mean so much. We open up with a game at Wisconsin, and then two weeks later against Auburn. We're not sure how good Auburn's going to be, but like that, that's not a typical third week of the season game for us. Yeah. Um, and I, I think we have to get – we have to win one of those two games. You know, no. I, I, you want to go 2-0 and there, but like after, especially after the season we just had, if you split those games, you're not unhappy. Sure. Especially considering Wisconsin's a road game. Um. And then other than that, like you look down the schedule and the only game we should lose is Ohio state. We should win every other game. Will we? Yeah. I mean, it rarely works out that way for us. Usually there's one in the middle there um, that where we drop the ball. Yeah. But I, th- I think, you know, if we come out of this season with three losses or less, you got to be pretty happy with that after what was a really down year. Yeah, it's it's and a tough to schedule. Yeah, I was gonna say if you know me, you know I'm like overly optimistic all the time. And I think, as I said, we're going into season four. I think as we've gone on, I've tried to get 
a little bit more realistic with my predictions, a little bit more realistic when I talk about guys going to the draft. Um, so I'm looking at the schedule, like you said, Wisconsin, Auburn right up front. Indiana is not going to be a pushover. Like they were a very good team last year. Then we go to Iowa, then Ohio State. I'm not worried about Maryland because if they give us any kind of shit again this year, I'll actually be pissed. Michigan, you'd never know. We play them so yeah. back and forth, so back and forth. Um, and, and then Michigan State at the at end. Michigan like, this year? Uh, no, we have them home. Um, okay. But, but it, it, it realistically, eight and four wouldn't shock me. Like, do I want that? Of course not. But, like, would it shock me? No. Um, would yeah, I be I mean, happy with four, it? I think is not a good season for us, but it's also not like a uh, disaster. Yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say. I think I think if we were to end eight and four, it would be like, well, it's not exactly one, not exactly what we wanted, but it's not the world's on fire. We don't have two two losing seasons in a row. Like yeah, that's, we, eight and four, we probably end ranked like in the twenties, if that. Yeah, yeah. So I, my hope is nine and three or ten and two. Like, I, I think realistically, again, for, for what we know about this team, we'll talk about some of the weaknesses in a minute. Like, it's going to be hard to beat Ohio State. Yeah, sure, they got a new quarterback. But guess what? Every new quarterback they have is always good. It's going to be hard to beat both Auburn and Wisconsin, like you just said. Like, realistically, there's going to be two losses. I, I think that's going to happen. Do I want to go undefeated? Do I want to go to the national championship? Of course. But I think, I think realistically for us, like, 9-3 and three seems the most – realistic slash optimistic like that that seems like if i was going to say an, I'd be an over under it would be a nine and three yeah yeah i think the, i think the over under is probably eight and a half or nine like wherever yeah. that is so um let's let's talk weaknesses strengths and weaknesses you know maybe let's start with weaknesses so that we can end on a positive for strength what do you what do you see as maybe our one or two biggest weaknesses this year i just i don't think we have a lot of proven talent on the defense this year which is yeah. a bit of a, you know, it, there's, I think the defensive line the past few years has been like a, a big, okay, like next up. Yep. And, but there seems to be less proven talent behind them now. There's some possible position switching in the linebacker core. Um, for me, the past few seasons, our defensive backs have been like very up and down, like a, lot, a group that has a lot of potential a group that sends guys as like mid and mid round NFL draft picks, but like doesn't have great ball skills, loses 50, 50 battles. Like yeah. you make, make some mistakes in big places, things like that. And I, you know, I, I think our defense is going to be, I think, I, I think the, the tone of this team is going to be like how consistent the defense is. Yeah. And I almost, I almost do wish we had uh, one of our friends, Brandon Beal. Uh, he and I were actually talking about this this morning and he was kind of giving me his thoughts and it lined up very well with that of like, it's not necessarily that we're weak or that we're bad, but it's just that we're unknown. A big question mark. And, and we're not deep at all. Like linebacker, if you think about it, it's what Curtis Jacobs, Brandon Smith, Ellis Brooks, and then Jesse Lucetta. After that. And like those three guys, like, and I've, I've heard some, marks. Some rumors that Jesse Lucetta might be moving to the defensive line. He might he might be at the end. Absolutely, he might be a hybrid yeah. guy because um, so like, he's and those, really big and he's not super fast. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like those guys, even the starting linebackers. Like, yeah, there's potential at Brandon Smith. Absolutely, there's potential at Curtis Jacobs. Absolutely, but like, you need everyone to be hitting at the same time. You need everyone to gel really quickly, really early on. Like, it, it there's a lot of what if. So I don't I don't necessarily know if it's like. <laughs> Weakness, and we're going to get run over every game. I don't think that, but like, there's a lot of question marks there. So I agree. Were um, Brandon Smith and Curtis Jacobs either of them five star recruits, or are they both fours? No, I think they're both five. Yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah. like, it's it's yeah, time the for them to there. Mm-hmm. yeah, it, it's time for them to to be five star players. Absolutely. Like, this is this absolutely. is the season. This should be what Brandon Smith's third year, I think, and Curtis second. So like, yeah. yes, yes, absolutely, they should be in full time starting roles playing to the highest level because then that helps you a little bit, right? Like if you're, if you're a little bit worried about your D line, you got, you know, two potential transfer ends as starters and maybe those guys come in and they have college experience and they're just fucking ballers, right? Ebiketti and Tangelo. Like maybe that's, I do think the defensive line is actually going to be again, the best. I think it's going to be the, like the best replacement value. I hope so. 
I hope yeah. so, right? And maybe that's the case. And then, you know, if, you're, if your linebackers can kind of gel and they're in the right positions and they're, they're figuring things out, okay, then maybe you're, you allow a little bit of slack in the secondary. Or maybe the secondary figures it out and, you know, okay, the linebackers can have a little bit of wiggle room. So I, I think it's just a lot of question marks. Um, for me, I, I beat this horse to death all the time. My biggest concern, weakness, is the quarterback position. Um, I'm not going to beat Sean Glifford to death right now. I hope, I hope, 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 hope that I am wrong. I hope that he takes the biggest step in the world. I hope that Yursich has him firing on all cylinders. Um, but I think for me, like, that's my biggest concern because we go as far as he takes us. And if for some reason he does not work out, we have, what, like 10 snaps behind him in Roberson? Bayou's never played a snap. He's a true freshman, and that's it. So, like – you know, Roberson, I, I was calling his name all year last year. Like it, the, either, either the coaching staff, either I'm smarter than the coaching staff, which let's be honest, that's not true. Or they are much smarter than me and they didn't play him for a reason. Right. Like, so I think, I think you, you need Clifford to be slightly above average. He doesn't need to be an all American. He doesn't need to be a superstar, but he needs to be good. He needs to be good. He needs to be consistent. And then I think we have a real chance, but like, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous about it. Yeah, 100%. And not only is there like a lack of college snaps behind Sean Clifford, there's a seeming complete lack of will to replace him, no matter how poorly he does. Yeah. So like, yeah. They're, they're riding. And like, they had a backup who they could have put in last season, and they barely did. Right. So right. If you think it's going to be any better shot at replacing Sean Clifford this season, you're out of your mind. Yeah, I agree. He, I think he it's would have team. to come yeah, we out live and, die and throw no touchdowns and like six interceptions in the first three games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, God, please don't let that happen. To I was going to say, <laughs> how dare I put that <laughs> please, in the universe? Please don't even put that out there. <laughs> uh, all right, let's 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 cut that. Bad I said juju that before thinking about it. <laughs> let's cut that bad juju. Let's go to some strengths. What do you think are going to be some strengths on this team this year? Uh, you touched on the D line already, but what else? The biggest one's got to be the wide receivers, Jahan Dotson. Parker Washington. Uh, I think we've got a bunch of guys who could emerge in tight end. And I think we've got sort of a field of like two or three guys who could be that number three wide receiver. I think it's, yeah. you know, you, you've got two guys who I think are going to be two of the best five receivers in the big 10 on yeah. your team. I agree. I think, I think that duo is established. We know what we have with them and they're going to continue to get better. Keandre Lambert Smith. He had, you know, limited action last year, but <laughs> I think showed flashes as a highly rated guy and played as a true freshman. So that shows you something. Um, you know, you have the old heads who, who haven't fully put it together. You have Daniel George, uh, Cam Sullivan Brown, I think is still around. Like, mm -hmm. do I expect them to break out? No, but maybe they're, maybe they're a role player, but we've taken a lot of wide receivers. Like in that, in that class with, um, with Keandre Lambert Smith and Parker Washington, there were three other receivers in that class. And then we have a whole nother crop coming in where I think there's another three or four. So like, there's a deep receiver room that like somebody's going to break out. It's going to there's, there's room for someone to break out. And again, as the third receiver on the team, breaking out isn't going to be a thousand yards and 10 touchdowns. No. Right. If you put right. up a few hundred yards and like five or six touchdowns as the third receiver on the team, that's a great season. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, there's not many position groups left to pick from, so I'll go with the obvious. I think running back will be a strength. Uh, obviously, we hope Noah Kane is back and healthy. He looks absolutely fucking jacked in the pictures that they showed uh, on Penn State's Instagram today. Him running the ball, he just looks like he looks like he's ready to go. Um, and then you have you know the the trio behind him of Devin Ford, Kevon Lee, and Kaziah Holmes, and then the transfer in of John Lovett. Like you got five guys who could all potentially be starter slash impact. Um, and I just, I wonder how Cider gets them all playing time, how that rotation happens. You know, we've seen what happens in the past where you worry about getting guys touches and then injury bug hits, hopefully knock on wood. We're not getting that this year. Um, and I'm really, really excited to see what those guys do. So yeah, it's not all bad. There's, there's a lot to be optimistic for. Yeah. I mean, the only worry that I have with that running back room is Noah Kane staying healthy. Agreed. Um, but you know, we got a now a, a Kevon Lee with an entire season under his belt. I I, th I think this you know I think it could be a very special room. And I think, yeah. But you got to hopefully get it down to like two healthy guys getting most of the touches. Like one guy yeah. getting you know sixty five seventy percent of the touches. Hopefully Noah Kane, Kevon Lee getting like twenty five to thirty, and then a smattering of other guys. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if it'll be quite that much for the top guy. 65 is a lot, but like 
I, I would hope I would hope we're somewhere nearing fifty for the top guy. Um, but I agree, I agree. It should be one or two guys with you know the rest getting their reps in blowout situations and special packages and all those kind of things. Um, all right, next one up from Chris lines o two six. Uh, we're not going to answer this one right now because it would take way too long. But he said, can you guys assign every starter to a candy? I think that would be fun. Something to think about. We're going to come back to that in the future episode, Chris. Thank you very much. Um, and then says, but on a more serious note, what can we expect from the rushing game under the new coordinator? Um, I actually have a little bit of an answer from this. Have you, have you looked into this at all? Um, I think I did at one point, but honestly don't remember. Yeah, so, so honestly, like – we, you and I have both said we're not the biggest X's and O's guys in the world. So what I'm going to say to this is uh, go check out our friends for the bloggy. Uh, they have started up their film studies with Coach Caduti again. And he actually just dropped a video recently of what to expect from Mike Yersich's offense. Uh, it's like a 12-minute video. I just watched it the other day. Um, really good. And he talks a lot about the different kinds of concepts that he runs. Um, and he talks about the run game a lot. He talks about this, this sort of read option that he runs and even a triple option where he makes it so that the quarterback has – more often than not, a very easy pre-snap read of what to do uh, and shows a couple of plays at both Oklahoma State and at Texas of like, okay, this guy's going in motion, so we know we have that guy out of the picture. He's out of the box before the snap even knows. This is an easy, easy call for the quarterback to say, just hand it off, and the guy gets 12 to 15 yards. Um, and it happens multiple times. So like, I think watch that video. It'll give you a really good insight to show you how your such kind of sets things up to make the quarterback's life a little bit easier, which goes really well into what we just talked about in needing Clifford to take that next step. So if his reads are easier, if he's able to kind of slow things down and make those reads earlier, you pair that with the running game that we have and the talent that we know, I think you could see this team rush for, you know, 200 yards a game easy. Yeah. And I, I forget which one we had traditionally d- done and which one, Yersich does, but I, I think he runs an outside zone, and we'd always been an inside, inside right. zone team. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, I, I think it's a I, – I watched that same video, and I it definitely got excited about some yeah. potential for the running game. And you know, the other thing you got to remember is our running game really struggled last season, and it's really going to help Sean Clifford if it doesn't. Yeah, like, yeah. Part, part of the reason Sean Clifford was as bad as he was last season was because he – really had to make plays like his first yeah. year he had a very good running back situation and it took a lot of pressure off of him last season sure. he did not yeah you lose journey brown you lose noah kane i mean that's hard to come come back from um and then i, I mean i think there was a lot of things that went wrong with sean clifford but oh no yes. absolutely I agree. But like I agree. He, you know a was having to make a lot of plays and also his defenses against him were not having to play the sure. run as heavily you sure. know, like you, you kind of have to pick on every yep. play. Are we going to play run or play pass? Yeah, and in, in that in that video, uh, Coach Caduti talks about it a lot where you find the guy who's in conflict. Does he have to come up and stop the run or have to go back for the pass? And whatever he does, you're playing the opposite. Um, and again, of course, that's it's so much easier said than done. But I think if we're setting our guys up for success and making things easier for Clifford, I think everyone's going to eat. Yeah. Um, Let, I'm really excited about teams it. teams were allowed to just say, all right, let's let Sean Clifford beat us. Yeah, he's not going to. Like, that was the problem. Yeah. So, uh, to answer your question, Chris, I think we're going to see a lot of good things out of the running game. I really, really do. Um, All right, last two actually deal with name image likeness, and I think we're going to hold off on these till after the draft because basically these could be some of our answers. But I'll read them now, and then if we don't address them in the draft, then we'll get to them afterwards. CJ Scalzetti says, uh, best marriage of player and name image likeness opportunity local to Penn State. Uh, And then Sweens uh, says, what do you guys think? Uh, some past players would have linked up with if name image like this was in play uh, guys like KJ trace a Rob, any brand ideas for them. So let's save it in case any of them are on our lists here for this draft. Uh, and then we'll come back to them afterwards. So Pat, this is how this is going to go. Uh, right. It's just you and I, like I said, uh, I'm going to flip this here coin uh, standard, standard U S quarter quarter dollar. This is a, uh, Bombay Hook State Quarter. I don't even know what the fuck that is. That's but not state, see. but okay. Yeah, but they did territories and shit. That will be okay. tails. That will be heads. You will call it in the air. Ready? Go ahead. Tails. What is that? That is a head. Tails. That is a head. Okay, so now, now, do I pick to go first or do I take second because we're going to do like snake draft here? <sighs> I'm going to go first. I'm taking first. It's happening. 
I don't know if that's the right pick, but I'm going to take it. Um, so I will go first, then you will get two in a row, then I'll get two in a row, then you'll get two in a row. Again, this works better if we have more people, but our friends don't like us for tonight. Um, so let's start here. What's your business that you have that you want to be your hypothetical business for this? Wait, aren't you going first? Sure, but I don't have an actual business. I'm just going to pretend I'm some sort of brand. Um, so I'm just curious. I guess I, you can save it for your pick if you want. I, I can go first if, that, if that's easier for you. Um, I'm going to go first. I mean, this is the easiest pick in the history of drafts. I'm taking Saquon Barkley. Like, Saquon Barkley. And again, yeah. and again, let me remind you, we have to have one offense, one defense, one special teams, and a miscellaneous. Um, Saquon Barkley is arguably the most iconic Penn State player in the last – However, however many years you want to say it, um, even after his freshman year, people knew that he was going to be special. He was a household name. Um, any brand would have killed to have him. I think that's an easy one. I got to take Saquon. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll save my uh, actual business business plans for uh, CJ's question. Okay, or, uh, for fair Swinses. enough. Fair I, enough. I, I think I have some good ones. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I got I to gotta, gotta go with Trace McSorley. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an obvious one. He, it's guy's iconic, holds every quarterback record at Penn State, nicest dude in history, you know, making so much money on Cameo. It's, it's insane how much money he's making. And honestly, I think, like, if we're thinking, like, in the purest form of name image likeness, if you just hired Trace to do, like, a commercial for your local state college business, like, if I saw him on a commercial, I'd go to that restaurant easily. Oh, big time. I'd go to that car dealership easily. <laughs> Um, all right, so that is your offensive player. So now you got one more. Go ahead. All right, defensive player. This is an easy one for me too. Michael Motti. I knew you were going to take him. <laughs> Damn it! Damn it! He was, he was high on my list. Yeah, my. I mean, I, I just um, imagine him at like, and any commercial where he ends up breaking things is how <laughs> I would be marketing him. Like punching, breaking things. Rex Kwando. Standing like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just the yeah. flow, everything happening. I mean, that's pretty and, I mean, if I owned like a shampoo company, I, I would have Ooh. I would have had Michael Motti. I think like yeah. I think Paul Mitchell should uh sponsor they should. Michael Why Motti. Aren't they? Yeah. yeah. I mean he he fits the mold for especially after that that sanctions. I mean that video of them walking out of the practice field, like you said, that arms crossed pose of just like we're not going anywhere. I mean, people would eat that up. Yeah, if I owned a security company, St. Oh, Moritz yeah. Security Company. <laughs> That's a damn good pick, Pat. That's a damn good pick. Um, all right. So, I mean, I guess I could wait on defense now since you already have your defense, but you could take another defender as your miscellaneous. Oh, this is tough. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to wait on defense. I'm going special teams. This one should be easy. It's my guy, Joe the Toe Julius. Let's Damn it. go. Yeah. Uh, Joey Julius was a fucking legend during his time on campus. The only kicker, I think, in the history of all of football that just loved laying people out on kickoffs. Um, he was a legend. I don't know. Like, I'm going to say the same thing for a lot of these guys, but like, he was one of the most lovable players during his time. Um, you don't see a guy who's that big being a kicker, laying people out. I think I would love to see him tell me to come on down to Blaze Alexander Honda or whatever the hell it's called. Like, I, I would buy a car from that guy in a minute. Uh, so I'm taking Joey Julius. Also, I get two picks in a row. Why am I worried about who you're going to take? This is dumb. Funny enough, I think Joey Julius does actually sell cars in State College. Does he really? I think so. Oh, well, I know he sells he... cars. I don't know if it's in State College. Okay, well, then my pick is even more justified. I think that's yes. pretty amazing. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to run it back then with my defensive player. Um, there's so many good ones here, man. This is actually, this is actually tough because as, as I was making my list, I was trying to put them in order of like what I would think, and defense just became like a, everybody's tied because I think there's really a lot of good people here. Um, but I'm going to go with big personality. I'm going to go with my guy, Marcus Allen. It's a good one. Yeah. I mean, he was – you You remember that that play, that safety against Pitt where he did that, uh, the yep. whole, you know, pull your mouth open. I don't know what that's called. I would be printing T-shirts with that making a million dollars. Um, and he was just – I mean, the, the, the post-game dance videos. Like, you know, I would be – those things that would be on TikTok, they would be endorsed. I would be getting paid per view. Like, he, he was an electric factor. He really did it all. He was the life of that defense. He was the life of that team. Um, 
I love my team so far. I really, really do. I got Saquon. I got Marcus Allen. I got Joey Julius. This is this is shaping up to be a pretty damn good team. That is. That is a pretty <laughs> good team. <laughs> we will um, kick it back over to you. You have Trace. You have Michael Maudi. So you need one special teamer and then a random pick of your choice. Uh, I am going to go with special teams. I'm going to go with return man, KJ Hamler. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, like, uh, I, I think like that's, a, that's like a good way to sneak there. in a superstar there. That is, that's a good way <laughs> to sneak take in a return. I should have made a stipulation that it had to be a kicker or a punter, but I will, nope, I will allow didn't. it. I did not make a stipulation. I will allow it. Uh, you know, the human joystick, fastest man alive, uh, huge personality. Apparently, the last person you want dating your sister. <laughs> yeah, and these are all so things. Good. These are all the kinds of things that I want to bring to my business, no matter what it. it is. I love it. All right, wrap us up. Your last pick can be anyone you want: offense, defense, special teams. Um, <laughs> sorry, I got a little distracted there. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, so I have a miscellaneous. Yeah, so you can pick pretty much anyone you want. Offense, defense, special team. Uh, then it's going to have to be Micah Parsons. Yeah, I, I honestly no? can't believe he lasted this long. I really can't. Yeah, I mean, my, you know, Stick City, the Humble Beast, uh, our biggest recruit that we've had in, like, forever, possibly yep. ever. Um First round draft pick, and like to be, uh, have a guy come in that highly touted and l- live up to the the hype, you know, is not something we get all the time at Penn State. I think he's just he's he's the man. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I thought about taking him for my defense and saving Marcus Allen, but I just really wanted Marcus Allen, so I had to pick I don't him. Blame you. Um, I mean, yeah, Mike Parsons being that guy and being a Pennsylvania kid. I don't know if you said that. Sorry, I zoned out for a minute. Like he would be, it would be incredible. Um, all right, I got my last one here. This is tough. We're, we're definitely recency biased a little bit. Obviously, both of us being, you know, 30 years old-ish. Um, obviously, we're not going super old. Obviously, there's a bunch of legends, LBU. You could have gone back to, you know, the Jack Hams, the, the Sean Lee, Navarro Bowman, all those guys. Um, there's a lot of older guys on the offensive side, too. I mean, Heisman winner, John Capaletti. Not taking him. Sorry, man. <laughs> um, you know, Kajana Carter, Kerry Collins. Um, the Derek Williams, Deion Butler, Daryl Clark, Evan Royster. I'm literally just reading off my entire list right now. Like yeah, there's so many good names. There's so many superstar personalities that we've had, but my last one, I, I, I knew I could save this guy for last and still probably get him. He's an all time favorite for me. I'm going Anthony Zettel. I Ooh. loved Anthony Zettel. With the roundhouse this, kick. This man roundhouse kicked a water bottle, almost decapitated a young Saquon Barkley. In the offseason to train, he tackled a tree, an actual tree he tackled out of the ground. Sure, it was probably dead and rotting, but it still counted. Um, You combine that with his on-the-field performance, I mean, he was a D lineman who played both outside and inside. He had three interceptions in a single season. Like, as a D lineman, took one of them to the house, or almost to the house, I can't remember. Um, He was just a really lovable guy. And I think that, like, that combination of, like, He's kind of soft spoken and quiet in his interviews, but then like roundhouse kick water bottles, like that would make for some like awkward, funny commercials. Like it would be that kind of like, Hey, I'm Anthony Zetto. Come down here. Cause we're roundhouse kicking prices. Like it would be that kind of funny. I think <laughs> I think it would just work really, really well. So I'm wrapping up with Anthony Zetto. That's a great pick. He's one of my favorite, one of my favorite players of all time. Like it, it just, it, it just makes me laugh. It really does. All right, so let's wrap it up. My my foursome, I got Saquon, I got Marcus Allen, Joey Julius, and Anthony Zettel. You got Trace, you got Mowdy, you got KJ Hamler, you got Michael Parsons. I got to say, I think those are two pretty evenly matched those squads. Are, I, I think if there's anything that puts you over the top, it's Joey Julius. <laughs> I had to take him. I to, dude, I was He's like, an all-sponsorship athlete, let me tell you. Yes, and I actually listed out special teamers as just like punters and kickers. I didn't even think about return men, so nice nice on you. Um, it's Joey Julius, it's Sam Ficken, Blake Gillikin, Jordan Stout, and maybe Anthony Farah from back in the day. Like well, Kevin you're, Kelly, you're, maybe. you're missing out on the greatest opportunity for special team sponsorship ever, Alex Butterworth. Alex Butterworth. He was a punter. <laughs> oh, okay. I just, okay. So like six years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. All right. Fair enough. Um, yeah, but I, I think there's there's so many that we missed. I mean, if we look back at, at CJ's question and Sweeney's question of like, what businesses would have linked up? Which ones did you have in mind? Um, I think you got to go with KJ Hamler and Atari, the human joystick. 
Love it. Easy one. Uh, the one that's not quite as nice is, uh, have you ever heard of Phantom Fireworks? Maybe. It's like, I think a, so. It's like the biggest fireworks company ever. And like the one person I would thought of for that was Jawan Johnson. So oh, a fan, God. A complete phantom or a firework. Oh, my God. That's so mean. And I'm, I'm trying to get him on the show. That's so mean. All right. Listen, if Juwan ever comes on the show, we're never going to tell him you said hey, that. he's not listening. <laughs> hey, but he might come on. I, I have DM'd him. We'll see. Um, I think uh, the easiest one for me is Yitor Grossmatos and Crocs. Like, that was the running joke oh, that he would true. wear Crocs all the time. Um, so I actually thought about him for my player, but I just had to pick some others. Um, I think any defender. Dance studio. By the dance, dance studio, studio. I, I would I would sponsor uh, Antonio Shelton, the groovy Ooh, one. Oh, the groovy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Um, I think any, like, I, I responded to somebody's tweet about this. I think any, like, lockdown corner with, like, a home security company, like, hey, I'm Joey Porter Jr., and this is me for Simply Safe. Like, that's yeah. kind of easy. Um, Black Forest and Jack Ham, easy one. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I think Alan Robinson and any sort of, like, uh, there's any sort of like fishing, like seafood place, like after the catch, like, Hey, I just made the catch. Come here yes. and get our fresh catch. That would be pretty good. Um, Trace, if I, I, mean, he if was I owned a, a dentist office, I would have spon- sponsored Marcus Allen after that. Uh, nice. <laughs> nice. After that safety I've, pose. I'm still, I'm still trying to get Noah Kane and Nova Kane going. So maybe he big, could get into the dentist time. Office. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Trace. I don't really have a lot specific for Trace. I mean, he's the wizard of Camelot, but I don't know really what you can do for Mixed that. Mixed old ale house. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, I mean, you can't really sponsor alcohol, but screw it. He's a professional football player by now. Uh, there's probably a million of them. If you guys have any good ones, tweet them to us. Let us know who you would pair, name, image, likeness, Penn State player, and a local business. If I had a business that sold clotheslines, I'd sponsor Joey Julius. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many businesses sell clotheslines these days. If I did. But I like where your head's at. All right, well, let's wrap up there because I think this is getting to be a long episode. I said it was going to be short. Of course it wasn't. Uh, we're happy to be back. We're going to be doing more of these. Uh, we actually have a special guest coming on the next episode, so stay tuned for that. I'll tweet it out, ask you guys for some questions for her. Um, we'll tease her there. And, uh, yeah, we'll probably try to do probably try to do like every other week, every three weeks-ish now because we're getting close to the season. So if you guys have things you want to hear, as always, tweet at us. Let us know what you want us to talk about. And uh, you can hear more of us rambling. Pat, any last words for the listeners? Um, you know, a little bit of big news in the wrestling world. Uh, what do we got? Vincenzo Joseph, just named assistant coach at Stanford, and Ed the Truth Ruth, just named assistant coach at Illinois University. Congratulations to both of those guys. Congrats, congrats, congrats. That's awesome. Um, I think that's all I got. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. As always, check us out on Twitter, check us out on Instagram, on YouTube. No names, all game. We are.